Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. Hope you're well. A little while back, I asked you guys, as I do from time to time on the community tab of the YouTube channel, what do you think is the number one men's fragrance for winter of all time? The greatest of the great, the Ozymandias of fragrances. King of Kings, Ozymandias. So uh, it's, it's gone, it's discontinued. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. But yeah, I asked you guys, what do you think is the greatest of all time? And you did give me a bunch of answers. And that's what we're going over today. In your opinion, these are 15 of the best winter fragrances for men ever, hands down. This stuff is just, it's fire. It's, it's fantastic. You should know all these, but if you don't, no worries, because after today's video, you will. I wanna shout out all you guys that left an answer, that upvoted other people's answers. And if you wanna be in a future video like this, check out the community tab of the YouTube channel. There's always a question up there where you can give your answer. Now, all these are linked below, and here are a bunch of codes that you can use. Check those out. Got codes for Twisted Lily, Max Aroma, Triple Traders, a whole bunch of them on there. And a friendly reminder that my fragrances, West Loop and Edgewater are out. You can find these at every Perfume Mania and fragrance outlet store in the US, and these new 15 mil travel sizes have dropped as well. So if you don't wanna buy the full bottle, you can buy these right here for a lot less and check the fragrance out, see if you like it. And that's linked also below in the description, Michael Malone's website. Sounded like I was about to drop a promo as a wrestler. Here we go, we're kicking it off with Addy 2 k who says Carlisle by Parfums de Marley is definitely a goaded winter fragrance for me. You can adjust the number of sprays you use according to your occasion, very smooth and smells great in the air. Now, <laughs> you better get used to seeing Parfums de Marley, I'm just gonna tell you that uh, straight off the bat here. And it makes sense because when you think about it, as far as easy wearing designer style niche fragrances go, Parfums de Marley is probably at the top of that for a lot of people. And I feel like personally, and a bunch of you do, as well that their cool weather fragrances fall and winter are just a step above their warm weather fragrances so you're gonna see some pdm that's, that's all i'm saying carlisle's a really good one it's got some similarities to red tobacco from mancera but uh, as you say very smooth much smoother than red tobacco easier wearing than that one not quite as spicy not as sweet a little more grown up a little more elegant with great performance and carlisle's a big compliment puller as well i think this is one of the better parfums to marley fragrances in general and that's the first one that you guys I said is the goat. I mean, it says right here, it's it's a goaded fragrance. So the goat, goat, goat. Well, Dak, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. Devil A's says, for me, it's certainly Lamal Le Parfum. I really like the opening and middle notes of that fragrance. How about the dry down? Apparently that's not as good because you just say, I really like the opening in the mid. One of the greatest. I think there's like a little little piece missing there. Dry down, the base. The base, give me the base. But yeah, Lamala Parfum, this stuff is awesome. I, I think it's great. A lot of you guys out there, you know, talk this one up yourselves over the years about how much you all love it. Obviously featured once again in one of these videos where the fragrances are in your hands. For me personally, maybe I like the Elixir a little bit more than this one, but I mean, this is still absolutely fantastic. One of the best uh, releases of over the past number of years, one of the best flankers over the past number of years. It stands out easily among the designer realm. And uh, yeah, I can see this one just myself being in the consideration for like top 10 winter fragrances right now if we're just talking everything. But I, 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 I yeah, I'm Elixir might need it for me. Sentimental Health is up next, who says, until recently, I would have said Spice Bomb Extreme, but in the last two years, I have started collecting. And the one that I look forward to wearing most is Loam Ideal extreme. It somehow feels warm, comfortable, and relaxing. It's a log cabin, open fire, wingback chair, leather bound book, and black forest hot chocolate in a bottle. That's a lot of stuff packed right in there. And I agree, this is a really nice one. It's another compliment pulling type of scent. Easy to wear, very versatile. Good quality to it. It's uh, unique among most other designer fragrances. I mean, of course, it's got some similarities to other stuff in its own line, but outside that, pretty unique. And I do find this to be uh, in the upper echelon of winter fragrances, period, whether we're talking designer or niche. So I'm on board with this choice also. Cody Swank 6971 says, Oud Wood is my go-to for impressing in winter but you can also wear it year-round. If we're just going off of winter-only fragrances, then Dior Sauvage Elixir has always given me the best compliments. Since you said Oudwood first, I'm just I'm just gonna leave Oudwood here and just, that's your choice, okay? Because, because I don't wanna go get my bottle of Sauvage Elixir right now. You could wear 
oud wood year round, as you say, but you know, in, in the middle of summer, I'm, I'm probably going something different, but spring, sure, fall, winter, yeah. It's a great fragrance though. This one has been copied, emulated numerous times, both with clone fragrances, niche fragrances, even designer fragrances, taking some inspiration with what oud wood does and does really well. Spicy, sexy, sweet, growing up, elegant, sophisticated, little mysterious, bold, and very wearable for being an oud scent. Oud wood is great. And I know that Sentimental Health brought up Spice Bomb Extreme and said, you know, I don't really go for that one anymore. I'm going for the Lomity All Extreme. I've switched extreme teams, but you had to know Spice Bomb Extreme is gonna pop up, right? So up next, we have one from Nikola Jovanovic 36 47, who says, last Christmas, my mom asked me why I wasn't wearing that bomb. <laughs> that bomb. Said it reminded her of me and our Christmas family gatherings. So yeah, Spice Bomb Extreme for sure. Spice Bomb Extreme for a lot of people has been a go-to wintertime fragrance basically ever since it came out. Gets a lot of love in the fragrance community for a lot of good reasons. It's got nice quality. It is easily worn. The vanilla in there takes some of the edge off of the spice. Great performance, big compliment puller, all that stuff. So while it is an obvious choice along with some of the other ones on here, it's obvious for a reason. It is perfect for winter. So Spice Bomb Extreme, you had to know it was going to be on here. Then we have one from Panaceras who says, PDM Layton. Yeah, I know it's not unique and very hype in the niche world, but it's definitely the best for winter and I have 300 plus fragrances in my collection. No fragrance can't change my mind still. No fragrance can't change my mind. You double negative. No fragrance can change your mind. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is with Layton. Kind of the same with Spice Bomb Extreme. You know it's gonna be there. There's no point in fighting it. Like if you try to go around and say, oh, Parfum Somali Layton sucks for winter. Blah. Nobody's gonna listen to you. Oh, I hate that it has good performance and good quality and everybody loves it and I get compliments and I can wear it daytime or nighttime in the winter. I hate that. <sighs> Nobody's buying this, are they? Oh, oh well, yeah, I do like it, actually. The popularity of Layton just is what it is. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's basically like Aventus for fall and winter time. Everybody knows what it smells like at this point. It smells awesome, by the way. I'm probably not gonna say this name correctly. Patrick Roar TV EDT 5912 says, Herod <laughs> is a classic for me. Yes, Parfums to Marley again. Uh, lately, I've been enjoying Dior Tobacular. It's such a great cozy scent. So since you said Herod first, we are going with Herod here, but the Dior is a great choice also. And uh, this one, is right up there with Layton. For me, I feel like these are the two best from the house. Basically, you've got your tobacco here, your high quality tobacco scent with a nice uh, little bit of sweetness to it. And then Layton is your very warm, spicy, uh, sexy, sweet type of scent profile. So Herod and Layton, both of those uh, got voted on over and over. A lot of people put those as their number one and it makes a lot of sense. That's the last Parfum Somali. Okay, so no worries, no more PDM passed here. Uh, these were the top three vote getters, Carlisle, Layton, and Herod. Not in that order. I think in the uh, order of like which ones got talked about the most, it seemed to be Layton, then Herod, then Carlisle, if uh, memory serves. Jeremy Lopez, 2101, is up next, who says, Dior own intense. I haven't smelled a fragrance that I enjoy in the winter as much as this. Makes a person smell delicious. Yeah, yeah. You all know if you've been around for a minute what I feel about your own intense. I feel it deep in my soul. I love it. I love it a lot. I have gone through multiple bottles of this, which actually kind of bums me out because some of those bottles are worth a pretty penny nowadays. But I've gone through a bunch of bottles of this, surprisingly so, when you think about how non-versatile this is to a lot of people. You know, a lot of people would say uh, it's more formal wintertime evening and that's about it because it has great performance and it's definitely a classy, sophisticated scent profile with that creamy, makeup-y, some would say, lipsticky iris, but it is wonderful. And there have been many times that I have sprayed this on and worn it just for myself. So Dior Homme Intense, if we're talking about, you know, winter scent that you can wear anywhere, anytime, any place, and have it blend right in. No, it's probably, out of all of these, the, the least versatile, but in terms of just the scent itself, how it smells, perfection. Funky D50 is up next, who says, I love Bentley for Men Intense, as well as Ombre Noir by AC Miyake. Good luck finding that one, unfortunately. They both shine in winter temps. I gotta tell you, this selection, it brings me back. It brings me back because for a while, 
a long while, Bentley from an Intense was heavily hyped. And when I say that, I'm not just talking YouTube, I'm talking everywhere on the internet. Groups online, Facebook, forums, uh, Instagram, YouTube, of course, but really everywhere that people spoke about fragrances to each other, this one got hyped. Now, why? Well, first off, it's cheap, that always helps. <laughs> if you've got a fragrance that you can pick up for like 25 bucks, 30 bucks, that's gonna go a long way in getting that hype train started because there's not much of a barrier to entry. Now, if you've got a fragrance like this one or that one where you look online and it's like $300 plus at a lot of stores, then yeah. Uh, it's a pretty decent barrier to entry. A lot of people are not gonna just blindly throw 300 bucks at a, a fragrance bottle and be like, oh, I hope I like it. Some people will, but a lot of people are not. 30 bucks, 25 bucks, yeah, that's, that's a lot more feasible. So that's one reason. The second reason, it has kind of niche characteristics to it in the way it smells. It has drawn comparisons to other more expensive fragrances out there like Idole de Lubin. And so if you can you know, pay this much for a fragrance that has niche quality to it, then a lot of people are gonna enjoy that. It has nice performance as well. And so the hype train begun, began, started, <laughs> begun. I swear English is my first language. Now here's where uh, the problem begins with that though. This is not the easiest fragrance in the world to wear for especially people just getting started in fragrances. Now people that have smelled a ton of things will smell this and be like, that's, that's easily worn. Yeah, no problems. But somebody who has not smelled a lot of stuff, hasn't purchased a lot of stuff, worn a lot of stuff, they are probably gonna smell that and be like, wow, dude, wear this. And so what once was a fragrance that was almost universally hyped. Same thing with Lully Concre Noir to an extent. As more new people started to come in and learn about fragrances and wear them and buy them, they bought these hype trains that were hyped by people who had been around the block a few times, you could say. And they didn't dig it, didn't really like Bentley from an Intense, didn't really like Ancre Noir. And that killed off a lot of the hype that had built up behind fragrances like these. So it doesn't get talked about as much anymore, uh, but Bentley from an Intense, I still think is a great buy. All right, let's keep it moving. Up next, a machete. <laughs> Why'd I say it like that? Machete Talk Studios, who says, absolutely gotta go with Crimo's Spice and Black Vanilla. The use of its cardamom and bourbon vanilla with the touch of vetiver is just beautiful as a winter scent. It especially appears so if you wear it specifically during the December month. So, you know, when it ticks over from November to December, this one just, it doubles. It doubles in smell. I haven't talked about Cremo in a minute. Uh, they have great prices for their fragrances, really cheap. They are mainly what I would call clone fragrances, clearly closely inspired by other things out there. And look at mine, it's got like a nice aged patina to it. Looks pretty good. So this one smells more similar to Spice Bomb. So obviously that makes it a good choice for winter time because that's basically what you've got here. You've got Spice Bomb on a budget. Cremo stuff in general, very good quality for a low price. You should check out really their whole line of fragrances if you're looking for some inexpensive scents that smell similar to other more expensive fragrances out there. And maybe if you're in a you know Walmart or something like that and they have them there you could scoop it up. Up next is Hector Ramos 8691 who says Nishane Ani is a beast for the winter. Uh, unfortunately I just ran out of my eight mil decant. Yeah it sucks. One of the better vanilla fragrances out there and uh, frankly from this house you can typically pick fragrances up for really good prices from discounters. So Hector if you are wanting to pick one of these up I would say for sure shop around a little bit and look at the uh, big discounters out there you know fragrance by Joma Shop stuff like that and uh, pick one up from there don't don't buy it at retail. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with buying a fragrance at full retail technically that supports the brand more so if you want to go that route you know, feel free. I'm sure they would appreciate that more. But this is a brand that is uh, usually not that difficult to find their fragrances for sub $100. So if you go to Joma Shop, like I said, sometimes they have sales. They seem to run them about once a month or two. And Nishane is often part of those where you could find it for a little bit less than what they usually have it listed at. And then, uh, like I said, Frag Buy usually has them pretty good also. Great performance though, like you would expect from the brand. As I said, a great vanilla scent, big compliment puller as well. Danny Dew is up next who says, 1 million elixir 
or Invictus Victory Elixir. Uh, apparently a big fan of Paco Rabanne Elixir fragrances, it would appear. Uh, the sweetness pierces the cold so well and gives a warm, inviting, cozy vibe. Now between these two, I do have a clear favorite. If you've watched the channel, you probably already know, but Invictus Victory Elixir. I think this is one of the best releases of the year. Stuff is insane. Great performance, big compliment puller. Just smells fantastic in the cold. Frankly, just smells fantastic, period. One Million Elixir is, uh, is not bad, but it's done in a style that I have smelled a million times. And I feel like there are a lot of fragrances out there that do this style of fragrance a bit better. So for me, Victory Elixir of those two is the one. Marky Fraghead is up next who says, I know it's a super obvious choice, I do, uh, but it has to be By the Fireplace, by Maison Marcella. You forgot the Martin, Maison Marcella. That's okay. This stuff is absolutely on point. Now it's very sad. Mine is uh, quite low. And it looks like it's uh, also kind of taken on like the Cremo style where it ages and takes on this nice deep rich color. This is very warm, slightly smoky, which you would expect because it's by the fireplace and then has a great chestnut note to it as well. Kind of a roast chestnut. So by the fireplace, even though it doesn't get quite the level of hype as Jazz Club from the same house, I think during winter by the fireplace is actually a little bit better. Jack I Rhodes with the most interesting choice, I would say, um, by far, it says Green Irish Tweed by Creed. I think you have your Aventus during all year round, Viking slash Silver Mountain water for spring and summer. But for me, autumn and winter, Green Irish Tweed just sticks out and gets me a lot of compliments. Also, Curveball in there. Tobacco Vanille from Tom Ford is also a worthy mention. So, um, not for nothing, but I don't know that tobacco vanille is, is, is the curveball here. I think the curveball is green Irish tweed. Like, hey, uh, green Irish tweed is perfect for winter, right? The one that's, you know, really fresh and bright and green and clean and is supposed to remind you of a walk through the Irish countryside, a little soapy. That one, that's an obvious winter choice, but I got a curveball for you here. The tobacco fragrance that's really warm and sweet with like the dried fruits and everything. Yeah, I know that's not a, an obvious choice, but I think during winter, we could be onto something here. Just messing around, of course, but yeah. Uh, tobacco Vanille is generally viewed as an fall and winter fragrance and Green Hours Tweed as more of a spring, summertime fragrance. But I will use this opportunity to reiterate what I constantly reiterate. If you have a fragrance that most people would think of as a spring or summertime scent, so here we have one, uh, but you really like it, wear it during the winter. See how it works off your skin. Because obviously for Jack here, this crushes it during the winter. And truth be told, I have never viewed this fragrance as a potential winter scent, but now that I think about it and knowing how fragrances work for me, uh, with this one having the green kind of feel that it has, I mean, obviously the name of the fragrance is Green Hour Sweet, it should smell really good in the cold. So I don't know, Jack, you might be onto something here and I'm gonna start wearing this a little bit this winter. Last but not least, we have Alexander Alvarez, 9133, who says, Paragamo Womo signature. Very affordable, a well-known gem in the community. Quite unique, has great projection and longevity. Love it, the roast coffee here, very well done. Good amount of sweetness, fantastic performance. Big compliment puller, I've said that a number of times that this is one of those kind of unheralded compliment beasts where it's always worked well for me, even though it's not what you would think of as a typical compliment getting scent. Ferragamo Womo and Womo Signature both are perfect fragrances for cool weather, so I agree with you completely. And the color scheme kind of matches there. So there we go, guys. There are your choices for wintertime fragrances, the best of the best. Got some cheapies, got some more expensive ones, just kind of runs the whole gamut here. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Thank you everybody that took part in this. And again, if you want to be in a future one, check out the community tab. Stay safe out there, guys. See you tomorrow for another fragrance video. See you later.